four. Um, you can expect there'll be two presentations. Each presentation will be approximately uh, 25 minutes long with 30 minutes for questions. There'll be a short intermission between the two. Uh, the second group will be PACER planning. They'll be presenting Networks of Opportunity, a citywide vision for pedestrian and bicycle pathways in Chicopee. And the first group is New Leaf Consultants, and their title of their presentation is Powering Forward, a Vision for Turner's Falls Canal District. And we'll begin now. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming. New Leaf is excited to present Powering Forward, a Vision for the Turner's Falls Canal District. New Leaf consists of Kelly Fenton, Kenneth Kirkland, Desiree Dembski-Hamlin, Erica Roper, Rick Gallagher, and myself, Jeremy Price. Our client, the Town of Montague, would like to redevelop the Turner's Ball Canal District. However, the, la the site's critical infrastructure and access are major barriers uh, to the redevelopment of this site. Um, creation of essential, so the creation of our vision plan is an essential first step uh, that will allow our client, the town planner, or the town of Montague to solicit funds to redevelop the Turner's Fall Canal District and potentially put the properties back onto the tax roll. Uh, similar to the discussion of chicken or the egg, a committed developer to the site uh, already would like the town to provide necessary infrastructure, like the Strathmore, fixing the Strathmore Pedestrian Bridge, um, and providing utilities like sewer and water. However, uh, the town would like to see more of a commitment from the developer. The goal of our vision plan is to reintegrate the downtown to the canal district to increase river access to the town and to honor the historical roots of the village of Turner Falls and its inhabitants. Uh, as you can see here, this is the Connecticut River. Further down the stretch, there is an informal access point for access to the river. However, it's not very well known. Uh, we would like to increase that. Turner's Falls is one of five villages within the town of Montague. The town of Montague is located in the geographical and economic center of Franklin County. Uh, Turner's Falls is roughly 30 minutes drive from both Amherst, Massachusetts and Brattleboro, Vermont. We believe uh, its accessibility to major transportation corridors such as I-91 and Route 2 uh, make it an ideal location for residents, visitors, and everyone in between. As you can see here, uh, this is the Turner's Fall Canal District in relation to the downtown. Uh, the patch is also a very important area in our study as it relates to the railroad annex building over here. Uh, additionally, there are a lot of recreational opportunities in Turner's Falls. Uh, due to the proximity of Turner's Falls to the Connecticut River, uh, this was an ideal location for the inhabitants of Native Americans. Um, in 1868, with the vision of Albert Crocker, it became the first planned industrial village which utilized the abundant hydropower potential of the Connecticut River. Uh, and due to the post-industrial hiatus of the 1950s to the 1980s, uh, the, ultimately this decline in the economy had various effects on Turner's Falls. Um, however, due to the stagnant period of that time frame so, and lack of development within Turner's Falls, uh, there, the architectural design was able to be preserved and it enhanced the walkability and vibrancy of the downtown. The town has, the village has invested a lot of money um, into the recreational opportunities. It provides a lot of affordable housing um, and ultimately we think that is a selling point for this area. Furthermore, um, I'm going to be passing on to Brett now. Thank you, Brett. So our client, uh, the town of Montague, alongside with Walter Ramsey, the town planner of uh, Montague, has asked us to develop an overall district vision plan for the Mill District site. Uh, these deliverables um, have been developed and it's our directive to carry through them. Um, is uh, to first to show a mixed use as well as uh, highest and best use for uh, the site, also to uh, create visual plans and renderings of the site, and to uh, think of investment strategies for the uh, concerns of issues of infrastructure as well on the site. 
uh, and also to recommend a brand and a, sort of a new identity for the site as a whole, and uh, to also uh, have a, a recommendation plan as well as an implementation plan for these deliverables, and also to create a public engagement strategy or method. So the existing reports, um, the town of Montague uh, has developed, uh, has completed a range of studies, assessments, and um, reports. Uh, these reports um, cover the town, uh, the village, and more importantly, the site. Uh, specifically, is um, showed economic development strategies, uh, community development plans, and brownfield assessments according to the site. Uh, for the, from these um, reports, we have uh, tried, we have uh, sort of gathered key information from these reports to help create our framework uh, to uh, go forth with our implementation plan and recommendations. So some of the key findings and moreover some of the key themes that we find uh, through these, these studies are uh, first, uh, a lot of the reports touch upon adaptive reuse of the site, uh, include mixed use, possibly light uh, manufacturing, industrial, uh, retail businesses. Also uh, to um, address the issues of infrastructure, of how utilities and uh, the uh, failing infrastructure on site. Also uh, at this point a lot of the uh, reports sort of reiterate the fact that the public has um, noted that they do want the site uh, used in a space use. Um, also, a big part is accessibility. How will pedestrians and uh, vehicular access sort of coordinate within the site uh, together? And also, uh, some economic components of how, uh, what is revenue uh, generated and uh, what sort of uh, jobs and taxes will be um, given for the region of the town. So now I will pass on to Eric to talk about uh, data and demographics. Thanks, Brett. In order to understand the population that will be affected by the development in the canal district, as well as the folks who might use it, we really analyzed um, demographic data based on these four geographic um, constraints. So that is the village of Turner's Falls, the town of Montague, the county of Franklin County and the state of Massachusetts. We'll look at a number of these tables which identify specific data points for 2010 and percent or change elements for 2010 to 2000 to 2010. Each of these change elements will identify the direction of change, the degree of change, and the color will identify if we specifically identify this as a positive or negative change, green will be good and red is a negative change or an issue. Regarding population, the village of Montague um, accounts for more than 50% of the population in the town, the village of Turner Falls accounts for more than 50% of the population in Montague and has seen slight growth while the town and county have experienced uh, decreases in population. Regarding income, um, the village of Turner's Falls has a significantly lower income than the town and county and has seen a slight increase but not to the same degree. Regarding race, white is the dominant race in the village of Turner's Falls as well as in the town, county, and state. However, with the exception of the state which doesn't follow the same demographic trends, the village does have the lowest um, dominance of the white race and it also does have the highest change of in that rate. Um, there are four environmental justice districts in the town of Montague. Three of them are located in the village of Turner's Falls. Regarding employment and industry, um, as Jeremy said, the village of Turner's Falls was historically a planned industrial village. Um, over the last hundred years, the village has experienced, as well as the community around it, has experienced a significant decrease in manufacturing opportunities. Many of these have been replaced by education, jobs in education. However, the village still maintains a strong um, specialized manufacturing industry. Uh, the village experiences a higher rate of unemployment as a urban center within a regional area. It's to be noted that the city of Greenfield, which is just across the river, also has a higher um, unemployment rate. Um, so 
due to the specialized manufacturing industry, um, the Greenfield Community College and the Franklin County Technical High School, which is located in Turner's Falls, present specific opportunities for both existing specialized industrial um, manufacturing as well as um, coordinating with incoming uses. Um, the median age, the population throughout the county and throughout the state is aging. The village is aging at a lower rate than the town and county, but at a higher rate than the state, and again, is the median age is lower than the town and county. Regarding housing, 55% um, of the housing in the town of Montague is located in the village of Turner's Falls. There is a high um, concentration of affordable housing that is federally funded affordable housing, like uh, in this image right here, um, which accounts for some of the low median income and a number of issues within the community. There is also some very expensive single family housing and some more moderately um, priced low, in, or, uh, low to mid income housing, but low to mid income housing and family ha accessible housing have been identified as gaps in the area. And thank you, Desiree will talk about existing conditions. Thanks, Erica. So we're going to now focus on the existing conditions of the site. And we'll be talking about access to the site, land use on the site, the infrastructure, and transportation. So starting with access. Um, I will be referring to the north end of the site as well as the south end over here, which is separated by this uh, Fifth Street Bridge. Keep that in mind. So we have an 11-acre site in total, um, and on, we have a number of bridges that serve the site in various conditions. So starting on the north, we have the Index Property Bridge, which is currently a pedestrian bridge. We have the Strathmore Pedestrian Bridge, which is currently out of service due to its structural integrity. We have the White Bridge, which is uh, open to vehicular access, and that is how you cross the river into Greenfield. Adjacent to that is a open and functioning pedestrian bridge. Moving further south, we have the Sixth Street Bridge, which was a temporary bridge set up, but is still being used uh, for vehicular access. And people that live in that patch re residence, residential area can use this to access their homes. Adjacent to the 6th Street Bridge, we have a defunct bridge that the town has indicated could be opened again in the future for pedestrian use. We also have uh, the Power Street, which goes through the Patch neighborhood and connects to the grid downtown. We have the White Bridge, which crosses the river and is on the state's list of bridges that needs uh, a, a lot of work. In terms of land use, this air, the entire area has been zoned historic industrial in 2001. Uh, in 2004, the zoning bylaws were updated to allow residential uses by special permit. So by right, uh, we have industrial uses, commercial uses, and institutional uses, all of which are currently being exercised on the site. And there is a, um, an approved RFP, uh, an approved proposal that has residential units proposed in it. And we'll get later into the specifics of that later. We are dealing with five different owners and one tenant on this entire site. The infrastructure on the northern end of the site crosses via the Strathmore Pedestrian Bridge in these pipes. The infrastructure is aging, and this is a major barrier for how the future of this site can be used. Uh, there is an existing fire suppression system, and on the southern end of the site in the railroad salvage area, we acknowledge that there will be a costly connection to the, the town's water main. Uh, for transportation, we, there's a canal access road uh, that is uh, at its narrowest 10 feet wide. The, in, the industry here has tractor trailer trucks that can back up the road, which is an issue. There is not a lot of on-site on parking. And you can see on the other side of the canal that we have a, an excellent bike path that is frequently used by people in the community. So we've acknowledged that there are a number of assets and limitations to our site, all of which you can see here, and we'll be discussing in more detail as we view a site inventory. So moving from north to south, again, we have, uh, we have open space here by the First Light Hydro um, Company. We have the index 
property, the Strathmore Complex, Building 11, an uh, active paper mill, Turner's False Paper, institutional use, and the railroad salvage area. So on that northern side, the first light open space is uh, technically open to the public, however, it is not advertised. Um, but the company is up for sale and they're also going through um, the FERC relicensing process, which would be a great opportunity for the town to request greater recreational um, access opportunities for the community. The index site was a former coal cogeneration plant. It has been dismantled. However, you see that there's still a coal silo here and there's an existing building footprint. This will be help. This is owned by the town of Montague and will be helpful uh, if the town or someone wishes to rebuild in the future. We have the Strathmore Mill Complex, which is also owned by the town of Montague. There is a small condo area in there that is operated by the Turner's Falls Hydro LLC. They operate a historic uh, water turbine in that area. There are limited hazardous materials in the building, and that does include, it does include asbestos. There also is some mold and fire damage. Building 11 is one building of the 10 building Strathmore complex. It is also owned by the town of Montague. However, there has been an accepted proposal by uh, Aubert Construction, who is a local um, business. And that uh, proposal will inc includes artists live in workspaces. Turner's Falls Paper was previously known as Paper Logic, and they uh, are an active specialty paper mill in the area. The Franklin County Regional Housing and Redevelopment Authority operates their offices out of this site. They are interested in relocating, and we've acknowledged that this site has the best vehicular access and potential parking um, opportunities for the future. <clears throat> On the southern end of the site, we have the railroad salvage mill. This building is privately <coughs> owned. However, you can notice that it's an advanced ruin. There is no roof. <coughs> And then we have the railroad salvage annex, which the town has obtained, and the request for proposals just closed last week. Um, there was a brownfield assessment done, and it came up with a clean bill of health. The uh, request for proposals, again, looks for additional artists' live workspaces. However, no more than two residential units would be approved in that area. I will now pass it on to Erica to discuss precedent studies. Thank you, Desiree. New Leaf explored a number of previous LARP work. Um, some of them identified specific elements such as energy efficiency, green elements to, um, to mill revitalization, as well as building codes. We felt that these three presented the most interesting story. Starting in 1993, the Draper Mill Complex in Hopedale, Massachusetts had a feasibility study and plan performed by the Center for Economic Development. In 2013, Sarah Spencer wrote her paper, Preserving the New England Town, to identify what factors contribute to success and revitalization. Um, the Draper Mill was one of the sites that she discussed in her paper. The Draper Mill has not been redeveloped and is currently up for sale. One of the biggest things that Sarah identified in terms of the success of mill redevelopment was the active engagement of the community in town and support for the project. Uh, therefore, we feel that there, this project is an excellent opportunity because Turner's Falls has already showed us how um, committed they are to this project. However, looking at the third uh, precedent study over here, the, once in, the redevelopment of the once and future mill sites, which was uh, the mill in its town, it's a redevelopment checklist. It was created by John Mullen. I edited it and it also had a research assistant by Ola and Angelica uh, from our LARP program. This um, precedent offers the opportunity for us to actually um, see, grade Turner's Falls and compare it to other communities. We have nine other communities that have been looked at under this checklist and this will help us under, understand how well Turner's Falls is prepared to develop. Thank you and I'll pass it along to Ken to discuss the work plan. Okay, so going back to the first slide that Brennan discussed in terms of our client directive that we were given New Leaf has decided that some of these items could have been combined, and so we created two separate groups of client deliverables to address all nine of these. As you can see, these the nine have been put together in the same. Uh, none, none have been erased or none have been, none have been erased or added. We simply combined like items together to create two separate distinct groups of deliverables. 
So our first group, our first deliverable that we're going to be giving is a public engagement strategy in which the client has asked us to formulate a list of stakeholders that are going to be important within our overall site redevelopment. So we've discussed here, starting from the top, starting from the top, starting from the left and going around, we have Turner's Falls Hydro LLC, First Light, Turner's Falls Paper, Mass DCR, Franklin County the Regional Housing Development Authority, their Community Development Corporation, Obear Construction, and as well as the Nolan Beaker Project, which are the representatives of the Native American population in the area. And we'll, we'll be conducting interviews with individuals within these stakeholder groups, one for, every, one for each group, and then a couple uh, municipal department heads within the town of Montague itself. What we're going to do is we're going to have 12 stakeholder interviews. Each, each interview is going to roughly be about 20 minutes long in order to accommodate everybody that we need to talk to. We're going to have about two to four weeks to get this done, and the client has told us that there is a sort of participatory fatigue in terms of overall public participation because of the completion of several other large-scale plans that were done. So we recognize that we want to balance the fact that the client says the client has recognized that, but we also agree that broad public engagement in and of itself is a good practice. So as part of our recommendation within the public engagement strategy would be to recommend broader public engagement strategies in the future as later phases. So the second portion, which is really the meat and potatoes of the project, is the actual canal district vision plan, which answers the client's question of what are we supposed to do here. This vision plan is going to be split into four distinct parts. And these are the parts listed here, and I'm going to go over each of them really quickly. The first part is our district vision. What exactly do they want this? What exactly do they want this district to look like? Is there a particular brand or identity that they want to associate with? And how are they going to market it to, to solicit funding and also to potential developers for investment? Whatever that vision is, the client has specifically asked us to integrate the retaining to integrate the existing industry. So Turner's Falls Paper does wish to remain it as part of this plan as much as possible. The overall district plan is going to have many key elements that the client has asked us to address, such as land use, housing, open space, <coughs> circulation, and it's going to also have an individual separate pedestrian circulation plan in which we try to incorporate the adjacent canal side rail trail, possibly as an extension into the site itself. We're also going to describe, we're also going to have associated land use and zoning maps in order to understand the site, and also we're going to have a large discussion whether or not plan use development is in fact a good strategy for this site. All in all, the, the client has essentially asked us to whatever whatever to, uh, strategy we wish to implement, we that we use the highest and best uses for each of these sites. And the UMass Design Center we're, we're, is working in collaboration with us in order to create roughly three to four images and three to five perspectives that are going to illustrate how this site wants to look overall. And they're going to make sure that this oh, this design palette is going to reflect the overall historic nature and character of the site. And so finally, in order to get all of this material going, what needs to be done? As stated before, there are several infrastructure and access problems that we have. It's a very limited, it's a very limited site despite its adjacency to downtown. Just beyond the street line here is the beginning of downtown, and the only part separating it is the power canal. So we need to make sure that, that police and EMS services can, act, can adequately access the site in case of an emergency. We also need to make sure that existing infrastructure, such as water and sewer, can handle uh, any increases, obviously, in industrial, industrial use is going to have a much different requirements than any future redevelopment in terms of mixed use. So we want to address that. And overall, we need to make sure that because the site itself is so limited, it was not designed for automobiles. So we need to incorporate automobile access overall as well. All of these improvements are what, we, was, are what the client has defined and we as well are necessary for redevelopment to be successful on this site. And so I will pass to Kelly, who will conclude this presentation. Thank you, Ken. So the first part of the semester, we've been spending a lot of time um, looking at what currently exists in terms of reports, getting a better understanding of Turner's Falls, um, the site itself, and how all that fits into the region in terms of getting that context. Um, the second half of the semester, we're really going to be focused on uh, really developing our proposal. Um, so for next steps, uh, specifically, we're going to be doing the public engagement portion, which is the stakeholder interviews. We're also going to be looking back at some of the stuff we've been collecting, um, so in terms of precedent studies, looking at those for recipes for success. We're also going to um, get out and do some more field research, so going to some specific sites where redevelopment has been um, success stories. So some of those places include uh, East Hampton, the East Works, uh, Holyoke, the Gateway City Arts Center, uh, North Adams, Mass Mocha, and in Worcester, the Canal District. Um, that one actually is going to be a tour through SNEPA. 
Uh, also in terms of developing the proposal, we are doing a pro forma training, which is sponsored by the Urban Land Institute. This is a workshop that, um, that they offer in terms of evaluating different real estate options, and we're lucky that we're going to get trained in doing that. Uh, we're also going to be presenting to the Franklin our Regional Council of Governments, uh, so we're going to be presenting to the planners there to get their feedback. Also working with Jen Stromson further, and the production of plan views and renderings to further explain our proposal. Uh, also, we've, uh, along the way, we've identified gaps in our knowledge, so some of those include um, that things we want to explore a little bit more further, so those include um, innovative infrastructure solutions, uh, creative economy strategies, and also funding mechanisms would be very important in terms of developing a proposal for our clients. Um, additionally, we would like to leverage the, uh, the department knowledge, um, so we're looking forward to hearing your feedback so that we can um, power forward to create a uh, successful and thoughtful Canal District vision plan for our client. Thank you very much. We would now like to open the floor for questions, suggestions, comments, any feedback you may have. <coughs> Flavia? Hi, I want to first congratulate you for this presentation. The graphics were beautiful and very well structured, clear from beginning to end. And I stayed in a minute to help us to see today, so that was a wonderful job. Thank you. I, I have a few questions and they are all like sort of interrelated. So I think I'm just going to try to um, express everything and let you react however you feel like. My first question relates to the uses of this space and as it relates to the goal of this project. Because it's about redevelopment, but also about branding. Identify what is the identity of this place and value the, not the, the resources, the historic resources that exist. And in your initial assessment, I didn't see much about, you talk about the, the downtown is very vibrant, but I didn't see much about what is that that makes this place unique? What, how vibrant it is? Why is it vibrant? Is there a life, a nightlife? Is it how people use these spaces? because I understood also that it's a highly residential area, right? Like if you concentrate 55% of the housing in the whole town. So it's highly residential and it's vibrant, but I still am left with a gap of understanding about what's happening in these spaces, how people use these spaces. And if we talk about uh, the historic value of this site, that's something that can be uh, understood in the same way in all the other new towns in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. This is not particular about this site. If we want to talk about branding, we have to find the unique value, the relationship to the river, to the environment, how people live and use this space in order to identify what makes this place unique mm -hmm. and value that in terms of our So my question to uh, related mostly to these social and cultural uses of the spaces that you presented very well about the physical assets of the place. You mentioned, for instance, that it was a location favorable for native people, and I was like, well, what about that? You know, there is, if you have some other information about the native, how did you say it? Uh, yeah, favor of the native population. Is that a historic fact or is that are there any remains or what's going on in that sense? And um, I also also curious about uh, the previous work because if there is participation fatigue, there is a lot of public participation uh, efforts that have done in the place and I didn't understand what came out of this. I was just talking to Jeremy about that yesterday. What have you learned from these previous participation efforts would be very helpful to understand uh, how people perceive and use this space because it's my understanding that now you're going to focus only on uh, corporations. Your, when you say stakeholder interviews, it's like only with 
cooperation. It's not with all the stakeholders involved, cooperation with organizations, well-established organizations, right? So my question was also about what have we learned from these previous efforts and how can we integrate this into your project? But overall, that was a great invitation. Well, let's start off uh, to address the first part when you when you when we when we were talking about the branding aspect. It's kind of a double-edged sword in the fact that with the area is essentially a blank slate. We, the fact that it's been it's adjacent to downtown, so it's physical, it's connected to it, but it's it's isolated at the same time by the canal. So the idea is that it's a, it's a blank slate and that you can kind of create your own brand or identity. It's not particularly attached to downtown in the sense of it has a. It's not an extension of downtown in, in terms of their vision. So we've kind of used the blank slate aspect as a way to create, our, to create the own image. Uh, as a corollary to that, the town planner has told us that there is actually a lot of, there's demand in, in a, there's a level of demand for artists live workspace. So that's one of the big major portions that they're looking for as a way to get this site going. The historic aspect is that there have been several, there have been several ideas uh, in terms of the plan that had been done earlier for the downtown livability plan, there was about 50-50 of chance, about 50-50 split of tear everything down and make it an open park, which would be about three and a half million dollars. And then there was roughly the same amount of, same percentage of people who say we should preserve it as, as, a, as an ode or as, as an honorary uh, piece to our, to our past, because this site is what made the town exist in the first place. The town essentially came from this site. And so there, there's kind of a, there's there's that aspect of it too. In addition, the um, Native American aspect it can be answered by Desiree. Okay, so uh, <laughs> well, backing up one step uh, to tie to the downtown and the branding there, we have acknowledged that Turner's Falls River Culture is a cultural council funded by um, through funds through Massachusetts, the state um, that is currently operating and has focused on the downtown and the residents' connection to the river. So while, although they are not a stakeholder in terms of owning property on the site, we do intend to uh, seek information from them so that there is a cohesive uh, development of a brand. Um, to tie into the Native American uh, question, uh, there is evidence that populations, Native populations have been there for thousands of years, up to 10,000 years. Is uh, one, one estimate. There's a lot of research currently going on in the area to support that. Uh, there's also a lot of programming through the um, DCR, the Great Falls Discovery Center, that uh, supports that. The Nolan Bika Project is um, a representative group of people that have native uh, descent from the original tribes in that area, although I, I believe that none of the actual tribes currently exist and they're not formally recognized tribes right there. Um, there are a few other elements. That would be marvelous. I would, I would uh, strongly suggest in the interest of time that you uh, take comments and questions and then arrange to speak with um, faculty members at, at greater length, just, just for the sake of, it was a two hour time frame for the whole presentation. So all of this discussion is extremely valuable, but I think you want to hear from as broad a range of people as possible. And, and that's my introduction to my, <laughs> my commenting question. So, like, what was that? <laughs> I really wanted to talk. <laughs> I really wanted to talk. Uh, so, Thank you, Fabia. Yeah. We'll talk to you. Thank you. I'll yes. to find many of my questions. Yeah, so, uh, so just uh, a quick comment and then uh, a few like really small comments to help improve your uh, presentation. So I, I agree with Fabia that uh, I think the uh, organization and the quality of the presentation is very strong. I think you've demonstrated uh, knowledge and uh, technical ability. Um, uh, so you still have some work to do in terms of demonstrating real understanding and awareness of, of what's going on in that community. So you've got lots of data, you've got lots of precedent states and so on. And so it's a very well-informed, very uh, intelligently organized presentation, but um, really kind of um, getting a, a real feel for, for what's going on. And I think the interviews, the stakeholder interviews will help with that. So let me just mention a few things. One is you, t you talk about um, environmental justice areas in your um, analysis, which is great, uh, but you didn't. You need to explain a bit what those are for people who don't know what those are. So I'm not asking you to explain it right now, but 
when you do a presentation explain what you did for yourself. Uh, Erica, I know you didn't mean anything by this, but never ever refer to majority white populations as dominance in the white race. Um, uh, in terms of precedent studies, um, I sort of feel like there was a, a kind of Mullen monoculture without love, uh, admiration and respect for John Mullen. There are other perspectives on um, adaptive reuse of mills, and, and, and I know you're going to be looking at these things like East Hampton, where I have to look at the relationship between Holyoke and South Hadley. Um, the department has done work on that, the Ludlow Mill development, where, I mean, there are a whole, whole bunch of um, studies that, that may also be relevant to what you want to uh, study. This is a big challenge for you. There's a significant uh, planning fatigue and participation fatigue that, um, you, from that list, it's very clear there's been a lot of planning going on in money. But I think uh, people want to see what's new and different about your approach, so really that's the burden and the challenge to this too. Sort of show how your participation, how your planning, how your vision builds on all of that, but also it's not just a continuation of the same thing. You're, you're taking a different sort of approach. And you're just sort of building on and integrating uh, what's been done before. Um, it would be interesting to know whether um, Montague has done any kind of capital improvement planning because this whole issue of infrastructure is really critically important in terms of how it gets funded. So um, I don't know whether it has done that or plans to do it, but that's probably the one recommendation that you would want to make. Um, and then um, uh, you talk a little bit about the, the downtown uh, Turner's Falls side, uh, but uh, there's the other side of the river too, so it's important to understand what's going on in Greenfield and understanding that area of context in terms of what sorts of options are going to represent viable, highest and best uh, redevelopment possibilities. So really kind of think in a more inclusive way and not, not just you know, the, the site and, and but, uh, but, uh, great job. Thanks, Mark. I have a small comment. Uh, thank you for the two beautiful presentation. They were very well done. I appreciate the use of photographs and text along the way to give a flavor of the place. And I just want to encourage you to go to use more of your own photographs. I think that you, as a group, may benefit from spending a little bit more time on the side. These are entirely our photographs. Yeah, but there was a number from others, and I want to see more. But, and and it's, uh, this is tied to uh, a bit of the comment about the site being a black slate. I don't think that any site is a black slate. People have perceptions, uses, legal or illegal. Uh, there could be witches there, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and so um, try to project the sort of diversity of perception and use and vantage points. Uh, rather than sometimes all, only the good things could be, could be helpful in informing you as you design or, or, or do your planning. Uh, overall, it was really beautiful. It was really helpful to have the, the key on the left to tell us where we were. And, uh, and it, was, it, was, it was very enjoyable to be here. Michael? About a second or third, whatever, whatever everyone said about the presentation, the graphics, and just your uh, presentations in general were very professional and uh, impressive. So great job. It's not easy to stand up here and to work all night and get this presentation looking so good. So nice job. Um, a couple of things, though. Uh, I don't think you've got, in some ways, um, I don't quite understand. So you're at midterm, and you've been researching a lot. I still don't quite understand the essence or Turner's Falls. And, of course, I live nearby and I rarely go there. And that's something I'm wondering about too, because I think someone said it's very accessible. And I don't find it to be that. So that's one of the challenges I thought it has. So I guess I, I wish you, and I think you more probably have this information, but I think if you maybe dig deeper. And the other thing related to that is to look at, in some ways, I don't know if you should spend the time talking to all those corporations, <laughs> as Fabian says. I think you should go look at those existing <laughs> studies. This place has been studied, like a lot of towns around here, to death, just about. Uh, there's, they've looked at the arts. They've looked at um, housing, you know, mills, uh, lofts, and things. So I, I think if you have a bunch of those, which I'm, I'm guessing you do, go back and look some of those and dig deeper. You know, and so what, what's, what became of those things? Why didn't any of those things in those proposals in the last 10 years, why didn't they happen? I know there's a woman, Lisa Duval, who now works, I think, for the Chamber of Commerce, but she used to be doing lots of art stuff 
in um, Turner's Club. She would be a great resource. She's been there for a long time. Uh, so I would add her to the list, really, uh, of, of someone to talk to, to, to see uh, what happened to those studies and what's the vibe on the ground. Also, I don't think of it as a vibrant place, so I would take exception. You know, you might want to say that in front of the client and call it vibrant if you want to, but when you're here with us, you can call it a challenged place, you know. Uh, and also, relating the, what I call the island, you know, the Strathmore site, to the rest of the city. I think there's a dynamic there that you're maybe not ignoring, but there could be ways of thinking about this as a positive thing. So how can you play off the stuff that's happening on the mainland to what you're proposing? So there may be a scheme where they're totally <coughs> different, but I think there may be a better scheme that you're playing off the strengths of some of the stuff that's already happening in the downtown, which I've never been on the island, but I've, I, the few times I've been there, I have been on the downtown, all those numbered streets and stuff. So that's something that maybe you're missing, that there's a you know, synergy there. Um, and maybe you're proposing some new bridges and things, which could be great, you know, maybe the state has funding for those, I, I don't know. So I think there's, there's other things that you need to dig deeper on. And then lastly, maybe just be adventuresome in the sense you've got this part, someone said level the whole site. I don't know, I would like to see what the implications of that thing turn into a, a ruin and a park might be. Not to say you have to even present that, but you know, maybe you should give, maybe you should think big like that, if nothing else, just to show us what that would result in. You know, what is the tax losses? What are the, what are the costs? Someone said $3 million to demolish it. But when you said that, I was kind of thinking, you know, there's a certain amount of people in this town and lots of infrastructure, you know? So at some point, I think that it's a real challenge versus what you're trying to get at what to do with all that ex uh, excess stuff. And the thought that there's these developers kind of going to be coming in the next 20 years, I'm suspicious. So you're going to have some vacant buildings for a long time. You can, you can phase this in. But what's going to happen in the meantime with those vacant buildings? So I think there's some interesting things there that you probably should dig a little deeper on. And maybe you, know, you could uh, end this next steps with some really fascinating things that you're about to focus on now. And I kind of missed that. Elizabeth? Um, yeah, Michael actually said this is some of sort of what I'm doing. This is a very competent, cautious, careful, professional presentation. And that's a great start, and that's just right for the first half. But for the second half, I should, you know, one of the things planners get accused of, frankly, is being boring. You know, let's not be boring. It's okay to not be boring. So in the second half, you know, I would try to look for a story that you're creating about the future, about a great future for this place, and try and present it in a way that is going to engage the audience, frankly. Um, and you've got your, you've shown that you're competent and you've got your numbers, and so that's good. Like I said, that's great first stuff. Um, like my question coming out of this is, do you have, I think you guys have some ideas. Like you didn't, you weren't ready to present them, that's okay, but I would have loved little nibbles of things like, well, here's a few <coughs> things we might explore in the second half. And if there is time in the half hour, I'd love to actually hear, hear that. I'll leave that, um, I just keep the time. I'm really happy that you're going to do the pro forma training. How exciting is that? That's wonderful. Um, in the public participation front, I find it helpful to differentiate between collaborative processes with stakeholders and public participation with the public. And if you could tease apart which of those is worn out. Maybe it's both, but it's nice to sort of figure out which it is and then you can sort of figure out how to build on one or the other. And so a collaborative process would be an ongoing stakeholder engagement and you would be recommending the process that they would continue. Public, it's sort of the same for public process, but that's more like one-off, try and get people in the room and get their opinion. Um, you know, that's a, it's just great. Good job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, hi. Um, I, my name is Debbie, and I'm in the uh, MLA program in the second year um, and had in the graduate of the Conway program where we had done a lot of 
uh, planning contracts last year, and so it's really exciting to hear what you guys are talking about specifically with Turner Falls and these post-industrial mill towns. And uh, one of the pieces that I felt, like, I really enjoyed your presentation. It's very uh, clear and concise, and you've really done a lot of your homework, and I really appreciated watching that. I want to say that first. And then the part that I would like, that I would love to see that wasn't here was this connection of the history of all the mill towns in the region and that, that sort of big picture uh, synopsis of the history of mill towns and then where they're at today with this, like they're now all seeking to uh, gain a new foothold to improve the, each town in this creative economy. And how do they do that outside of tourism and something that's really gonna take hold and, and businesses may go to each one of these towns and say, what's better about Turner's Falls, what's better about North Adams or better about East Hampton, and, and it's happening. There are these these things that are generating in, in each town or experiments that are happening from IT businesses and uh, you know these live workspaces and whatever else. So I'm just really curious of like where that creative part of following with like there's no blank slate and that history component, and then where that allows you to switch into that vision part, like the, taking all those creative ideas that you are probably generating to like put.